Okay, so here we are on day two. I'm gonna go ahead and get you caught up just to make sure you know where we're at and where we're going. This is the side cabinet that goes next to the fridge and we've already um, got this one cut down. We got the side rails out of here right now. This is the one that had the drawers, but we actually have a plan to rebuild the drawers. You'll notice the back is uh, kind of cut apart, but that's because we had those wires going through there and the water going through there, which are also gonna have to go through there again. So we have a plan to try and put the drawers back in it, put the side rails back in so that they can close uh, and rebuild those drawers today. We've got this cabinet hiding some of our tools. <laughs> That's already been rebuilt. This is the one that goes above the fridge. So it's been shortened so that the new fridge can fit underneath it. This is one of the out. This is one of the drawer boxes that we're gonna look at rebuilding to fit in that side cabinet over there. Um, hopefully that goes well. We'll see how that goes. And then this one we haven't started yet. <clears throat> this one has to also be shortened. It's gonna be the same height as the one above the fridge. It's gonna go next to it. And we're talking about maybe doing a shelf underneath or something. The only tricky part that you're gonna see coming up with this project on this one is gonna be these, uh, this old style of adjustable shelves. That metal is like dug in there, so that's gonna be interesting to see what we do with that. Um, but yeah, of course we got the trusty assistant here. Isn't that right, buddy? He's gonna help us get this done today. And the forecast says it's gonna be over 100 degrees, so let's try and stay in the shade. I really appreciate you coming along, and of course, if you enjoy this type of content, please do subscribe to the channel and leave a comment with, uh, you know, what you think you found the most interesting, maybe, or your favorite part, or maybe just some love for the dog. And without further ado, let's get into this project. Day two. I need to find a mallet uh, to take apart that drawer. Yeah. Here's one, I should do. Seen better days, but it's rubber. So I'm trying to get this drawer front off so that I can rebuild this box to be a little bit slimmer so that it fits in the new cabinet over there. I have been working on getting it off, but it gave me some trouble here getting this out. I'm gonna have to glue that back together. Um, so I'm gonna try and use this iron to heat up some of the glue and see if I can take this apart. Weirdly enough, it's doing something because it smells like popcorn, kinda. <laughs> Which I'm hoping is the glue <laughs> loosening up. I'm trying not to inhale too much of that, I guess. Well, I have made a mistake. <laughs> um, while I was working on this, sure, heating it up and then beating on it to try and take it apart, uh, I was hitting on this side and didn't notice a piece from earlier came off of this side. So now we're gonna have to deal with that. So I have this shelf and I'm wondering if that might work instead of drawers. Uh, let's see how the length is. Not great. Oh yeah, talk about working smarter. Oh yeah, that's nice. So I need to get these uh, shelf things out of here so that I can cut this box shorter. Um, but these are like old school things that are cut, they're put into this recess and there's a tiny little nail right here. And then they were adjustable. <laughs> they're adjustable, as in the piece comes out. Uh, and you can put it back in there, anywhere. You know, like they used to do it. <sighs> yeah, they, uh, they really don't make them like they used to. <sighs> Uh, so anyway, that, that. <sighs> Gotta get these out. So I've been picking at these staples, trying to get them out. And I just realized I might be able to 
slip this in there, pull the whole thing out that way. Because like I said earlier, staples aren't meant to hold the way that they're going. They're in sheer to stop it from going up and down. So this is to hold the shelf up, not to hold this thing in. It's providing resistance down. So if I can pull the nail straight out or the staple straight out like that, then that's the best way to do it. Okay, so that was relatively easy. Now I just have to do it three more times. Now I got a pretty sweet fan upgrade. This thing's pushing way more air than this little interior fan. We're looking at this process here, maybe, of um, we setting that all off. We'll need to run the saw blade up more. So you have this lifted up on shelves. Yeah. Give you height. Because the drawer box. Yeah. Tracking. Drawer box is on an angle. Right, so you can't just run it straight through the saw. Pretty straight. Okay. Now we're looking pretty straight. Ah, yeah. And then you can run this straight through the table saw to cut the front off. Push more so we don't hopefully hit the. Whoo! Quite the cut. So this is actually pretty interesting. You can see when those little sparks hit, the table saw is chopping through nails or staples or metal. And you can see it kind of light up. Uh, which is pretty wild. There's one coming up right here. <laughs> Make little fireworks. Fourth of July came early. So now, the front has come off. Not as beautiful as we'd like, but we proved the concept. So yeah. Now we can pre build try that. Another one off. You got another one? I do, yeah. Let me go get it. We're gonna start the saw with two and a half. Side through, the side through the bottom. So I'm keeping it straight to the fence, keeping my hands out of the sideway. That makes sense. Is part. Because the box is super unstable. Right, because it's been cut on both sides now, mm -hmm. so it's like wobbling, and you don't want this blade to bind up while you run that through. Okay. We'll turn it down so we're about a half inch up or so. Just high enough to cut through the back. That looks like success. So that's the top we're keeping, right? And this is the bottom that we are not keeping. We might use somehow, but it's not the box anymore. Oh, we are? The bottom half. Oh! So we're gonna do the thing we did on the other box and take the cleat then and and the and the rail yeah mostly the rail is what I'm looking at here. so we need to get this piece back out to rebuild the face frame again on the other box because it is currently missing a face frame um, and maybe use this piece oh that's the rail 
Okay, instead of this piece, which is thinner right now, but it's stained exactly the same, and if you don't need it, you can repurpose it for a rail over there. This has the groove in it, and that side's all screwed up. This side's kind of clean. It's possible we we'll might build something with it. I mean, ideally, we're just taking this apart. Yeah. And keeping this. But you'll notice that this is dadoed into the bottom. You can see, stuck there in the groove. Kind of like that. So if you do run the saw through here, trying to keep the melamine base, then you just gotta trim up the rest of it that's left. But you said disassemble, probably take this piece off of this piece. Yeah. Okay. I'm basically trying to get these two pieces. Right. Free of here and here. Because this is the same cabinet as there. Gotcha. Pull that staple out. Oh, that works so good. Nice. Is there another one in here? Let's see. That's a good way to break nails off flush. It's one piece down, the back off. I'm trying to save these two pieces here, the rail and the base. There we go. So we don't so much care about these edges or this board on the side. piece of cake, a little bit of cleanup, and it looks like we're going to have a good clean base for that cabinet. Trying to carefully clean this one up, so we're getting close to that piece that we need. something to clean use this chisel. out. Chisel would be good. That's basically what I'm using here. That's a chisel. So since this bottom of the cabinet used to fit in this gap here at the bottom, the dado, uh, it's currently too wide to fit in the box and has to be shortened up here on the table saw after it's been cleaned up. We're gonna run it through, trim it down a little bit so that we can attach it onto the box. We're gonna start at 16 and a quarter because we're also dealing with this. Yeah. With the one inch on both sides. Yeah. So we can't just take it all off on one side because we're trying to keep this joint together. All the blue stuff. So I don't need to make it perfect, but I just need, I want to make it so it doesn't have that wall on it. So I got a little extra glue kind of right here. It's making that mm. wobble. Just enough where it doesn't run straight. So you were cutting a certain length, but you need to cut exactly the same off both sides. Now that you shorten the one side, you have to shorten your saw blade as much as you cut off. Basically, this is the finished cut. So I did, took half the cut off the one side, and I'm taking the other half off of this side. Okay. 
too big. So that was part of my plan. Yeah, because it's easier to take it off than it is to put it back on. And also, because of this, this touches here and there. So when I look at it, it looks to me like this side is good. Okay. But I need to take a little bit more off of this side. I see. Looking so pretty good. I think it's going to fit very good now. Wow. My hope with reusing these is not going to be realized. I mean, yeah. I guess it could be if I could, from here, try to squeeze clamp that and drive those in. Yeah. Unlikely. Okay. So, what's your plan? Uh, let's just remove them. Probably not what we want to put on the internet. <laughs> I can always cut it out. Hammering with a minute. <laughs> We're getting low on clue, huh? Come on. <laughs> there we go. So we've got multiple clamps on here. Just putting pressure on the middle and the, the edges, trying to keep it all flush, looking nice. These clamps are pretty cool because they have these little stands on them. If you want, you can like stand them, stand something up as you clamp it. We don't want to have the screw like centered on the wood. We actually want the screw centered on like the plywood. Okay. Because uh, the wood is coming tweak. down and the, the thing is higher up. Yeah. We we'll want to push it directly. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Oh, nice. Now we got one drawer stretcher in there. Now to get this one. Magic. Three clamps on it. That's gonna glue all of these back together. This be these three. Looks like it. I don't know what's up with that other hole. Okay. So you cut the back of the box off. Basically, just straight down this point. Okay. To get around this. Uh, because I need to make that? this shorter. Right, we're shortening the box to fit in the cabinet that's been shortened as well. Yep. And the way this was put together with this special joint, we're going to skip that by. So we'll cut this off and then this will just be a regular butt joint. There you go. Boom. Okay. So for this box, we glued those two pieces back together uh, for the bottom, which is sitting on the top. Now we're gluing it back in where it goes to make a little short cute cabinet. So my friend said, well, what if we cut it a little bit more than that so that it'll tuck under the bottom? Slide up inside of there. But I don't want to go in there. Cut it more like exact flush instead of sliding it in. Yeah. So we'll go like that. Now we just gotta do it three more times.
I gotta try and use this massive drill bit. Drill into the brick wall, like these anchors are. That's gonna be hard. So I was able to do that, uh, and we got all these cabinets reinstalled, as you can see, shortened down, they're pretty nice. And uh, here's some pictures of me after I rebuilt the rest of the drawers. We got the new fridge in there as well, and uh, they're pretty happy. Things are looking good. We're going to have to figure something out for the doors, but I appreciate you coming along on this journey. Thank you so much.